Hey, welcome back everyone. Rob here from Ramp Studio Comics. So in today's video, I'm going to show you how to do some uh, broken up rubble and debris. Uh, something I use a lot for various uh, scenes in comics, and I thought it'd be a good one for a video today. And I've got a quick announcement for you. I've created a course bundle, so if you really want to learn a nice variety of what goes into comic art, everything from anatomy, perspective, drawing heads, uh, this course bundle might be something you want to check out. So I'll make sure there's a link in the description box below. And let's jump into today's video. And so what I like about this effect is it's randomized. So to me that a lot of times will make it easier to, to do because it's not something that you got to be too hard on yourself about, too specific. Uh, it also can be great for compositional elements. So I'm just going to establish a couple, what I would almost perceive as busted up uh, walls and debris. And again, this is great because say you got two characters battling it out or something like that, and they're busted through a building, stuff like this is uh, pretty fun to do. And again, it, it can really frame a scene quite easily. Uh, you can put it wherever you want. And so what I'll do is a lot of times I'll do a couple larger sections, maybe another piece right, right here kind of popping up out of the debris, something like that, uh, you know, showing it by scale uh, can be helpful as well. So it, it gives you more depth. You could even have another piece and it doesn't need to be the exact same shape. It could come out in any perspective. Uh, let me try to change that a bit because it's almost too repetitive. Let's just bring it out like this and let's see, maybe like this. We'll have this angle a little bit steeper. Like that. Let's try that. Uh, but actually what I was thinking too is really just making this one a silhouette. So that's another thing you can do to frame out the uh, the scene and the shapes. Maybe just bring one out like this and just, you could still get this angle in there, but then just fill it, fill it in entirely. So, you know, silhouette framing can be nice for your, uh, your panels. Um, so something like this, and then through here we could do like a lot of smaller little bits of rubble. And I'll be honest, a lot of times I just kind of scribble until I start to pick, you know, uh, basically until I start to see ideas in my mind or um, yeah I, I, I'll be honest I don't go in here and say oh this needs to be a pipe I mean I'm starting to think of a pipe shape now but it, it's a lot of times I'm just kind of scribbling around until I start to develop ideas maybe like a kitchen sink back here it'd be kind of funny right everything including the kitchen sink uh, so you could just draw on like like this, the handles, some depth down into the sink and maybe a opening for the drain. You know, it's little things like that. And then you could cover the edge of it with more debris. Uh, so you kind of want to hide all your edges with other little broken up shapes. And then in the very back, you could have like some silhouette shapes back here or just cross hatch them, you know, like throw in a perimeter shape back here and then cross hatch it. So again, the reason why I love this is because it's it's easy to do. You really don't have to be too specific. But with the rock, um, uh, or I don't know if you'd call this rock, this would be a wall, so it'd be a, a cement or something. But same kind of concept really. What I, what I typically would do is, is a lot of zigzagging back and forth Y and W like shapes in here, or lines, and then I would pick them apart and develop them. So, same thing over here, I'll just go back and forth. I'm just doing this as a way to start the texturing process, okay? It's not like I need to be too specific in here and these need to all be rendered the way that you see them here. Uh, I'm just throwing something in to kind of get the texture going, get the ideas going. And then from here, uh, now obviously if this was a brick wall, I would draw in all the, painstakingly draw in all the little bricks here. I'm not gonna do that, I'm just gonna draw the cracks because again, this is something that I think can be used uh, for different uh, different areas in your work, not just a busted up wall. It could be rock formations. It could be all sorts of fun stuff. But the thing I want to really stress in this particular video is to try to be more random about it. So that's that's probably the trickiest thing is like 
you get something that works and what do you do? You redo it, you redo it and you put it everywhere. And that can kind of backfire on you. Um, the first thing I do here really is I try to, I try to think about the plane changes. Okay. So by that, I mean the areas that are receding away from the light source. I'm going to perceive that the light source is up here somewhere radiating down. And so I'm going to pick apart areas that I feel like would recede away from the light source and, and be a downward plane change. And this applies to everything. This applies to shading faces, buildings, uh, cars, anything. You, you really want to think about the plane changes. Now you could just go back and forth in here and just throw these shadows wherever you want. And it'll actually kind of work, but it won't read as well as it, it could if you really think about, okay, so if I, if I do a chisel, an angled line right there, and I have a line here, and then I was to connect that back this way, that's pretty definitely gonna be shaded in. Okay, that's very much a downward plane change. And then if I have another little, you know, it's like pie shape right there, it doesn't, they don't need to bo uh, both be filled in. They, they could be, but I could definitely get away with doing this a solid and doing this just with a few lines. So it, it's basically, you know, showing the gradation, right? And then even in here, I could have another little chisel line and I could put another little shadow right there. And see how I could start to really get some different things going on in this area. Uh, but I do think it helps to be aware of the sides. Uh, the sides are really gonna help you show that plane change even more. So if I bring this out and align back here, and I'll, I'll break up the line because you don't want these lines too clean. You want some little indents and imperfections as you go. It looks cooler, I think. So just like that, I could say, well, there's, that one's gonna receive some light. Uh, and then maybe over here, and then I bring cut into this, you know, this side, because again, I don't want this line to be too even. Maybe that gets shaded in a bit. Uh, I'll tell you another thing that I like to do is actually start with a little bit of line work like this, and not always jump to fill in everything in. The reason why is because I, I like to have different gradations in my work when I can. Uh, not always. I mean, sometimes it's just helpful to really break things down into straight black and white or solid black and white. Uh, but I really like seeing how much of this stuff I can break up into uh, various uh, tonal uh, values. So for me, sometimes it's helpful to just start with some really light hatching. And then I can always fill that in later. And obviously I can go back the other way. It's not like you're ever stuck with... Um, comic art you know it's just like when you start inking you realize you know white out is a lifesaver and you you can just test things and then white it out if you don't like it and come back and do it again and sometimes you'll get your best uh, a lot of times you'll get your best work that way even in here as I work into this area I want these little like indents and, and chipped pieces and uh, even the cracks I want some of the cracks to be a little bit heavier in areas and lighter in others and then even these like little I don't know, dimples or cracks or whatever, but these little spots, see how I'm kind of bouncing the line in and out? I think that makes it look more interesting versus just throwing a bunch of lines like this and leaving them. Okay, so lots of different ways you could look at this and play around with different rendering techniques. Something like that, get some darker lines in there to kind of make it more pronounced here and there. Remember to take these straight lines and, and jag them around, you know, move them back and forth a little bit. This looks a bit more interesting. And the other thing I tend to do is as I'm coming up this way, I'm going to do thinner lines. Okay, so as I work down into here, I'll say this area gets some light, that plane change. I'll say this area is darker. And I'm just basically going to start filling more of this in as I get down to here. So it kind of reinforces the fact that this area is getting more light, this area is getting more shadow. Yeah, something like that. And then just remember too, you, you crisscrossing your hatching does a lot. So even if you started down here and you had like these little hatching lines, I probably should have angled those more to go with the plane, probably direct these um, with the plane change would probably be a good idea. Seems to always help the, the description of the forms when you do that. Uh, but take it down here, I can just make these ones, even if they do go the same direction, I can 
make them thicker and that makes it look like that area is more in shadow so it's not always that you need to cross hatch everything I mean, you definitely want to play around with that as well uh, and then what happens too if you have this di uh, what do you call it dif differentiate I can't say the word <laughs> excuse me if you have these different renderings you can easily just take another rendering as long as it's consistently over the top maybe at a different angle because it always reads better if it's not too uh, uh, too similar to a previous angle because it gets a little messy but look how if I shade through the entire area with these longer lines it basically makes everything progressively darker okay again as long as I don't have lines that are already going this way where it might get a bit messy to read uh, that's another way you can kind of play around with your rendering and so yes there's some little angles here uh, some that are going parallel to the form this way maybe they come up halfway and stop you, you know you can play around with that but I think this will look better filled in remember these little dents and dings I don't know what else to call them but if we get my meaning there yeah and then less up here and remember you can always uh, come back with white out or your eraser or whatever and lighten these up and then also the uh, uh, the line weight just have it darker on the bottom of these forms that are receiving less light so play around with the line weight as well and you start to get that jaggedness back and forth and, and you can just go to town with this right you can just keep rendering to your heart's content and really uh, get this to look pretty cool again play around with the different line variation here different edges always mess up your edges when it's something that's chaotic play around with lots of little imperfections uh, and stuff like this I'll I'll get in here and generally just throw lines kind of wherever I can always if I don't like what I did I can erase it out but I tend to find what happens is that more imperfections the better for things like this that I just don't want it to look too awfully clean so I'll do a lot of little stippling and just various little mark making until I get it to look um, you know relatively rigid and so the same thing over here I'll, uh, I'll work a little bit into this and then I'll time lapse the rest because it's going to be the same thing repetitively I don't need to keep explaining it to you but then also with this stuff like this remember what I said that you can do a lot with your silhouette back here and up here to encapsulate and kind of frame uh, the information you can even do some negative drawing so you could draw like a shape up here and you could cross hatch it as well but let's say that this is a, a silhouette to frame out the uh, the forms and then you could uh, you could take some white out or erase and you could erase some cracks into here so there's all sorts of neat things you can do and again likewise with this this is going to be a silhouette but I would probably go at the very final stage I would take a little bit of white out and do the little cracks that let you know that it is basically more of these but uh, silhouetted uh, up close because that that kind of doesn't a neat little thing for the uh, the framing of the panel so over here I would probably get a nice uh, big shadow off of this again I could do some negative space drawing in here Or I could just cross hatch this. In fact, I'm, I probably would. I'll probably just say that I would cross hatch this. But I could do a very dark cross hatch. And really, uh, if you do like three different uh, angles back and forth and one a little bit thicker, you can generally make that look pretty cool. And you can darken it more down here and then blend that off this way. Uh, and likewise, you could have some of this debris. As solid lines or you know some textured lines going through there and then show it as it comes over here and again for this debris I would just go back and forth until I start picking apart the shape so if this is a pipe uh, let's say this is right here lots of little imperfections dense things whatever put a shadow here And then I would just pick apart little shapes, like throw in cylinders, 
Uh, you could have a board coming out of the ground or out of this debris. I think what really helps this is if you get a few things that are noticeable, like I mentioned this kitchen sink here, so you do some shapes that are recognizable, then you can get away with the rest of it being a lot of crisscrossing and overlaps. You don't need every single thing in here to be recognizable. I've definitely seen styles where people do that and it's amazing. It's like, it's almost like a, uh, like they're showing how focused they really are because that's that takes some focus, I think. But uh, but I don't think you absolutely have to do that. I think there's some things that, uh, I hate to keep going back to a board here, but a board's pretty recognizable. You could have the board popping out of the ground and then you could draw in the, um, the edges are usually like these little cracks and then some of the swirling um, wood grain effect. So you can definitely make boards pretty recognizable uh, with a little bit of work. All right, so you could do some of those and it makes sense. So this is debris that makes sense there'd be some boards. Also, you can have some um, stuff that looks like a board, but it's, you know, it's got a sharp edge to it. You're gonna see a lot of that type of stuff, like it's busted and popping on the ground, looks a little dangerous. Um, what else? I don't know. I like me personally, like I said, I wouldn't focus too much on there being a ton of recognizable stuff. Uh, and then you can kind of start to connect all this with shadows. So let's, let's see if I can do that. I'll just shade off the objects a little bit. I'm kind of doing contradictory light sources here. So I'm trying to go back the other way now. And when in doubt, just, just scribble, doodle, connect it all together. And also a little bit of rendering here and there. on this side and probably a little bit of shadow on this side as well so yeah so let me do this that, that basically gets it all into place and oh and don't forget you could always throw in some rolling smoke to show the the fresh destruction right <laughs> the smoke rolling off the destruction uh, so yeah let me do this let me time lapse it now I'm gonna repeat what I did here over here connect a little bit more of this together uh, but, but again, the main point is just uh, lots of little details, some, some of them recognizable, they don't all need to be, at least not in my opinion, uh, and then, uh, yeah, render away. So let's do this, let's time lapse it and see what we come up with. Okay, so just tightening up the work a little bit more, and again, really repeating what I've already said about, uh, you know, rendering and things like that, but... What you'll see me do here in a bit is soft erase this, and then I'll start working with an HB lead and a 0.5 uh, mechanical uh, pencil. And I find this to be helpful for smaller details and tighter rendering lines, so I'm not constantly having to sharpen my lead. And I do like to finish my work with a little bit darker lead sometimes. But keep in mind, this is really the same way you can jump in with like an 01 micron or whatever size you like, various sizes of microns. And you would ink the work at this stage in the same way that I'm doing here. So I actually typically think of that in the same regard. So like if I was to uh, hand this off to somebody for inking, I would want the lines a little bit tighter. And that's what you see me doing here. Uh, so another thing that I tend to do is I, I pick apart these shapes with different rendering styles. Uh, and I don't think I think too deliberately about it. I just practice a different variety of line making uh, instead of, again, like I kind of mentioned earlier, filling everything in with shadow, uh, I just like to break it up a bit and see what different gradients and textures I can create as I do this. So hopefully this video has been informative for you. I'd love to know what you think, as well as what you'd like to see in the future. As always, keep drawing, keep having fun, and bye for now.